Hi everyone, my name is Nure Okum and my study or my research is called is titled Young Australian and Muslim Impacts of Socio-Cultural Climate on Emerging Identity. Now, the number of Muslims in Australia is increasing as seen by the Australian Bureau of Statistics. Um, and just as the number of Muslims in Australia is increasing, uh, but what we're also seeing is that there is an increase in the question and scrutinization of Muslims. Now, in the Australian context, what that context, what that means is you know, there's a contradiction between Australia's promise of a multicultural country giving everyone a fair go, regardless of the individual's um, religion, colour, race or background, and the discrimination, the hostility and the racism that it's that is occurring in minority groups on both the societal level and the institutional level. Now, emerging into adulthood is the kind of age bracket that the study looked at. It's often deemed as a positive and hopeful era in development as it allows individuals to fully explore and, um, and define their identity. However, this um, transition is not necessarily positive for all and sometimes mental health problems and uh, do occur and uh, engagement of risk taking behavior is high. Um, the individual like during this uh, normative period uh, and critical life transition period, individuals can be challenged to kind of uh, cope with changes in their life that can be um, social as well as contextual, um, and they could, which can involve various stresses. Now, um, in these uh, individuals can be faced with relationship changes. Uh, romantic relationships, unstable relationships, educational challenges, possible parenthood, uh, financial difficulty, employment stresses and so forth and managing these demands can be deemed um, or can exceed the coping resources that the emerging adulthood adult might have. Now in addition to the uh, this stage in addition to all these stresses that the individual is going through they also have that obviously um, the identity development period that's happening as well. For a Muslim youth or a Muslim emerging into adulthood, um, they are de de depicted as individuals who are a threat to Australia or um, who are radical individuals connected with terrorist groups. And in addition to that, you know, the, the marginalization and the exclusion, the, there's a po political discourse around the term Muslim. Um, and it's generally proliferated with terms such as oppression, honor killings, terrorism, anti-West and so forth, which only um, kind of, you know, increases the vilification against uh, Muslim youth or Muslims emerging into adulthood, as well as various other uh, groups of Muslims, but it also magnifies and jeopardizes their religious identity as well as their social identity. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this hopeful or positive era of development cannot, can actually be a negative or problematic one for Muslims emerging adulthood, given the added kind of um, stresses that are occurring with their identity and their livelihood. As such, the research that uh, that we looked at uh, with my supervisors was um, how do Muslims emerging into adulthood in Australia carve their identity during the this uncertain social cultural climate. So the interrelated research questions guiding the study were how do Muslims emerging into adulthood experience and represent their Muslim identity during the, this period and how do they experience a sense of belonging and identification in Australia. Now by this period we're talking what we're referring to is uh, you know when a terrorist attack occurs or when um, you know when something occurs and um, in addition to something occurring you know just the the political discourse basically occurring that is focusing on Muslims or Muslim youth and again with the terms that are used. Now the method um, in order to explore and provide insight into how Muslims emerging into adulthood carve their identity and their experiences identifying with their religion and um, IPA uh, methodology was util utilized. This allowed um, the experiences of the individuals to be both forward while also allowing an active engagement with the participants and the data. Semi-structured interviews were utilized as well as uh, demographic uh, questionnaires. Now recruitment was done via Facebook, snowballing posters were distributed and so forth. Something to keep in mind uh, during 
you that we had to keep in mind during this research was that I identify as a Muslim and um, I also fit the age range so I was considered inside of research now to overcome this supervisor acted as a mentor and transcripts were and transcripts as well as data analysis was um, examined by supervisors in a bid to assist in um, identifying any bias reviews that I might help have. Now, the two participant groups that we had throughout the study were the emerging adulthood, so the individuals who have these experiences, who are currently having these experiences. Now, um, two of the participants were male, were all six identified, who were all six were female. Now, out of the female participants, one wore a niqab, which means a face covering, and only their eye were, the eyes were visible. Three wore a hijab, which is what I'm wearing today, so just the hair was covered, and two of the females did not visually identify as being Muslim. Now, when we look at the adults, uh, we did ask them how long they've lived in Australia, uh, just to make sure that we do have uh, a solid ground for interviewing these individuals and um, you know their experiences within the Australian context. Uh, adults were not individuals who volunteered, emerging adulthood participants were individuals who did actively volunteer, whereas the adult participant group were individuals that we um, we actually approached uh, based on the fact that they do work with those or they volunteer with those who are emerging into adulthood and have a strong uh, volunteer or a strong background with those individuals. So they can not only bring forth the their experiences in working with individuals, but also their experiences in, prime, uh, in their past being in emerging adulthood, growing up in Australia and so forth. And, um, and basically their insight as well. So what we did was uh, we obviously while analysing the data, we always have to keep in consideration and keep in mind that the in, in each individual was an expert of their own lived experiences and we had to make sure that um, obviously our own biases and our thoughts were not interpreted throughout or not included in the study. So uh, we did take highlights, we, we did immerse fully in the data while we're analysing it, we became whole with the data. We analyze the data on numerous occasions, identifying codes or themes, and making, and then you know, reanalyzing the data and so forth until we um, until we were content with what we had. Now um, we had notes on themes, clusters, and codes, and you know they were basically submerged and so forth. We had two uh, primary themes, as you guys can see on the screen. We had identifying as a Muslim, and within that we had visual identification, identification through name, um, the discrimination that occurs due to identification and the aftermath of any discrimination that occurs. And within that, obviously, we had self-esteem, resilience, and the learning curve. We also had another primary uh, um, theme which was belonging and within that there was the social identification the sense of belonging the the other and um, being Australian basically so the social identity theory conceptualizes con conceptualize, conceptualize that individuals identifying with others in social uh, that individuals identify with others in social categories. Now, identity is grounded in various social categories and behaviours that adhere to that group. When an individual is following that, um, those notions, they reaffirm the, the image, their identity, not only to themselves, but to, um, to others as well. So there is an internal component that can include the emotional and psychological of belonging and identification. And then there's external, which may come along with economic and social um, impacts or effects. Um, positive effects um, can include, you know, of identification can include self feelings of self-worth, decreased uh, anxiety, social employment opportunities, economic security, um, security, occupational advancement, inclusion, and so forth. Whereas um, the, for for Muslims, being um, the word coming together with the term terrorism can cause a great sense of insecurity for Muslims um, who are visually identified as um, being Muslim, which is what comes around when we look at the data or the quotes. Um, you know, haven't included all the quotes from the research. Obviously, we don't have enough time for that. But um, as you guys can see with the two quotes uh, that are brought forward or in front of you, um, there is a lot of terrorism 
there is terrorism that comes about, there is looking Middle Eastern for a male, so a male not being able to visually identify as a Muslim, but just looking a bit Middle Eastern is enough to put them into that category of Muslim or terrorists and so forth. Now, um, the way in which an individual, obviously, as I mentioned, can vary, um, and as it did with the participants, with some covering their whole face, some just covering their hair, and some not doing any uh, uh, any form of visual identification. Now, um, with along with uh, religious identity being on display, what we're seeing is the discrimination um, that's occurring, and that's usually you know connected with social media and political discourse as well. Um, and Muslim women are the ones who are usually targeted rather than the um, rather than the males, basically. And um, so they have additional challenges, physical attacks, radical comments as well, um, because they've already communicated that they're Muslim. And um, there is obviously that fear that's involved and um, the employment that that difficulties in employment that can have as well as we can see with um, Zach. Now, in addition to visually identifying as a Muslim, there's also identity through name. Um, although a name change, um, you, you know, we see that in the quote, so I'm not going to get into that. But although a name change might aid in employment and allow the individual to fit in, in a sense, it can um, kind of diminish or reduce their identity uh, because obviously they've carried their name for years, but it can also impact their religious identity. It can possibly disappoint or alienate them from their community or their families. And again, this can affect the individual on a psychological and emotional level as well. So the choice of employment can come hand to hand with self-hate, shame and guilt, whereas unemployment can come hand in hand with integrity, which is a choice that the individual might have to make. Um, so, you know, with past studies that we looked at, um, that were done on um, similar topics, we found that, you know, growing up, you know, some people thought that there was no point in looking for a job because non-Muslims will always get, always get the job anyway, just based on names. And we saw that with um, the study as well. I haven't included it here, but one of, um, one of the older adults mentioned that um, some individuals were applying for jobs with uh, non-Muslim names um, and getting the job. And there, there were jobs that that person had already um, applied for a job with their uh, Muslim name as well. So there was that um, discrepancy or that name change and dif differences between applying for a job and so forth. Um, again, uh, discrimination comes forth along. Um, the individuals don't want to hire um, Muslims and the fear involved in hiring a Muslim that um, participants also spoke about, just I mentioned one earlier as well. Um, other participants also mentioned that they haven't been mentioning that they're Muslim, so if they don't visually identify or if their name is a bit Western sounding, they don't, um, they don't state or they avoid topics of background and religion or remove themselves from the group when that topic arises just so they don't have to mention their background or religion. Now, along with that, with discrimination, the various um, kind of factors do stem out, such as self-esteem. So although um, distress does occur, although anxiety does occur, there was this confidence boost of identifying with their religion and socially being strong enough to identify with their religion, I guess, as well, um, that portal that came about, as well as that there was also the learning curve. So increase, individuals increasing their knowledge um, just so they can, um, you know, state it to others um, and be strong and firm with their background and knowledge. In addition to that, obviously, there was that resilience that came about as well. Now, although there is um, Muslim, well, well, very well-rounded, educated Muslims being in society, um, there was also, um, you know, the fact that there's very little reflection of this in the media. So belonging did come about as well, uh, where Individuals stated that volunteering in various organisations, being able to stand firm and talk about their religion to others and belong in a group, um, gaining positive regard, giving affection, getting, uh, receiving affection and satisfaction, allowed them to feel um, connected, respected and supported and allowed them to feel that sense of belonging in Australia, not just between others who have the same faith, but those who have different faith as well. So there was that shared sense of mem membership, um, emotional connection and influence that they felt with others being connected and resp uh, uh, respected as well, when in the past they weren't feeling that.
And so we've got another kind of quote here that in which um, a member states, you know, that they were born and raised here, but it was the impact of media that had um, an impact on their sense of belonging and and so forth. And you've got that volunteer aspect there. In addition, or oh, similar to that one, we've got another uh, quote here who, in which um, the individual talks about their trip overseas and being questioned for a fairly long time. And still considering Australia home. So, you know, there was the status of being an outsider and that marginalization in a sense, not so much, but um, kind of that strength and that resilience that came along. Now, failure of belonging can feel, lead to feelings of social isolation, um, negative psychological and social outcomes and negative behaviors as well. Um, feeling as though they're distanced from the wider society, society um, lack of social support and so forth. So um, lack of belonging was a big factor where we saw volunteering as being a protective mechanism in a sense. So what we found is all four Australian Muslims emerging into adulthood do face various and unique challenges through the manner that they portrayed in the media, popular culture, politicians and this adds to their trans, uh, challenging transition into adulthood and pampers with their identity and sense of belonging um, you know we see that um, volunteering was a protective factor or uh, or so forth so and they you know educating others was also and being conscious making conscious decisions about how they represent themselves seeking support and knowledge also helped them in feeling a sense of belonging and trying to make an impact or sense allowing them to feel a sense of purpose and uh, was seen as a kind of like a coping me mechanism for them as well. Now I have included my e email uh, over here. So if anyone does wanna, does have any questions or comments or requires the references for the study, um, then I'm more than happy to share. Thank you.